Yo everyone, it's Jack from WhatCulture.com. Now, it's a very, very tense edition of the FastCon because as you may know, uh, it's crunch time for TNA. Obviously, with the Bound for Glory pay-per-view occurring this Sunday, uh, and this being the last business day of the week, TNA need to get their shit in order to fund the pay-per-view. It's, it's an incredibly confusing situation and one which may develop as we're shooting right now. There's no way that we're gonna know what happens uh, as this video goes out. So please don't complain if this video goes live and, and Vince has already burned TNA to the crown or something like that. But without any further ado, let's just crack on. Let's just cross our fingers and hope that nothing major emerges in the time being. This is the fast count. Now, usually I start off with all of the week's WWE news, but this time the news from elsewhere is just too big and too seismic to warrant any other place on the the card, I guess. The card? Yeah, the card. So first of all, let's delve in to the wacky butch crazy world of professional wrestling. I'm so excited, can you tell? So first of all, yes, it is the story of TNA's potential sale. Could it be rebranded as a different promotion? Could it just cease to exist? No one's really sure what's going to happen. It's very, very dramatic. Um, let's just recap the situation. And for those of you out there who might not understand business, I certainly don't, I'm going to use a popular TV show to draw comparisons between the key major players. So this is my version of Game of Thrones. It's TNA Game of Thrones. Quick little side note, my own knowledge of Game of Thrones is a bit patchy, but luckily the office is full of massive Game of Thrones fans. So let's do it. Dixie Carter, first of all, she's currently the majority shareholder of TNA. She is, for all intents and purposes, the Joffrey, who I am assured was a very, very unpopular leader in the world of Game of Thrones. So she's she's Joffrey. I hope, I hope you're following along so far. Now you've got TNA's various major shareholders. One of the biggest is, of course, on-screen figure and former frontman of the Smashing Pumpkins. Are they still going? Now, Billy Corgan is, I'm going to compare him to Peter Dinklage because he's kind of a bit moody and a bit miserable, but you know he's got good intentions. I think it would be a good a uh, good scenario for TNA if Billy Corgan were able to negotiate a deal with Dixie and come out as the majority shareholder. Now we get to, and I'm assured this is the correct way to pronounce it, although I'm not sure that's right, Aerolux Marketing. Richards told me that's the right way to pronounce it. That's the spell in there. Make up your own. That doesn't look like Aerolux to me, but whatever. Um, they have ties to Ron and Don Harris, two of the more controversial figures in TNA upper management. Obviously, former WWE superstars and formerly of WCW as well. Um, I'm comparing these guys to the Faith Militant. Now, I don't really know much about the later seasons of Game of Thrones especially, but apparently the Faith Militant just fucks up and everyone hates them. So draw your own comparisons there, but I've been assured that that is a relevant comparison. Now, you've got Corgan and you've got the Harris brothers trying to negotiate a deal with Dixie and she's apparently being a bit mm, uh, but then you've got Vince McMahon and, and I'm comparing him to that last with the dragons you know what I mean uh, because Vince is like weighing in the wings and he's been quite quiet about whether he's going to move in or not but he's obviously got the most firepower out of everybody he's just going to swoop in with his dragons I reckon and just plucked it well no I think Billy Corgan's the most likely outcome but if Vince was to do it it would set the wrestling world alight much like a dragon would so Thus concludes one of the most convoluted uh, points on the fast count ever. I, I promise I'll keep things brief from here on in. Second up, Bischoff wants to sue Matt Hardy. Eric Bischoff wants to sue Matt Hardy. Why, you ask? Because Matt Hardy has been conducting interviews uh, in character, but giving sort of shoot answers, if that makes sense. It's a weird kayfabe shoot blend. Um, and he said that Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan, and his choice of words, I apologize for, raped and pillaged TNA when they were in charge. This shoot interview went up on RF video and then was taken down because of legal issues, according to Rob Feinstein. F him, let's not talk about him too much. He's one of the worst people in wrestling history. Um, Google that if you want to find out, it's not nice. But then all that aside, Bischoff then put out a tweet sort of implicating himself as the reason the video was taken down. And then Rebby Sky, the wife of Matt Hardy, came out and said, controversy creates cash, or except when it's you. A pretty direct shot aimed at Eric Bischoff. She may even have added him in the tweet, which is the most blatant beef starter you could ever you can ever hope to find on social media. And finally, tonight sees the latest Ring of Honor pay-per-view, uh, All-Star Extravaganza 8, featuring a big main event for the Ring of Honor World Championship between Adam Cole, the current champion, and Michael Elgin. Other big matches on the card include a match between Tetsuya Naido from New Japan and my own close personal friend, Jay Lethal. Honestly, doesn't follow me back on Twitter, but I've we've had a laugh, we've had a few laughs together, and we had a chicken parmo together, if anyone, uh, all that aside, uh, and also, uh, a ladder war match, ladder war, uh, a, th a sort of 
three man, like TLC back in the days of the Attitude Era, three tag teams all going at it. You've got the Young Bucks, uh, the Addiction, and my boys, my absolute boys, the Motor City Machine Guns. Just want to say good luck to the Motor City Machine Guns. You, I mean, you're probably not going to win, but if you do, oh, just want the Machine Guns to win. Just so much, so much. Now let's continue with all of this week's WWE news. First off, even though it feels quite a while ago now, let's have a brief recap of Clash of Champions. Sheamus v Cesaro, I think, was the best match on the card. It was really, really good. Finished in a no contest, unfortunately. Chris Jericho v Sami Zayn exceeded expectations. Uh, we all thought that would be a bit of a filler match, but it was one of the most technically sound matches and most dramatic matches on the card. Women's title match, really good as well. Uh, the biggest news coming out of the pay-per-view is that Kevin Owens is still the Universal Champion. Jericho interfered and helped him defeat Seth Rollins. And there was only one title change on the show. And it's a heartbreaker for the many Rusev... Jesus, that was a long take as well. F oh. But yes, there was only one title change on the show. Rusev lost his precious US Championship to that evil wedding-crashing heel, Roman Reigns. This week on NXT, a few tag teams have been announced for the second edition of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. The confirmed teams so far include The Revival, excellent stuff, Gargano and Ciampa, really good, Ibushi and Itami, uh, good luck to anyone facing them, that's going to be stiff, and my personal favourites, I, I can't, words can't describe how excited I am to see this tag team in action, Bobby Roode and Ty Dillinger. Oh, I think they should be called tenuous, because ten, glorious te Yes, tenuous is a word, that's why it works. But doesn't it not mean anything you're on by? Well, it means they're tenuous, they're a tenuous partnership as well. They're not real friends, they're not real friends, oh so tenuous. And finally, another match has been confirmed for No Mercy. Wow, No Mercy's, it's coming around quick, isn't it? These pay-per-views are coming thick and fast. Uh, Randy Orton v Bray Wyatt, they're going to have their match, which was originally scheduled for Backlash, but never happened when Orton got injured. Oh, please win, Bray, you need to win. He's not going to win. He's not going to win. Uh, this week's takeaway, because it's my birthday tomorrow, is birthday cake. Time for this week's takeaways. I know it's not a birthday cake. Speaking of No Mercy, it is right around the corner. Uh, do you think it'll be a good show? What do you think the best match on the show will be? At the minute, looking at the card, I think it'll be good. Maybe not quite as good as Backlash, but the match I'm actually most excited for, apart from the main event triple threat, which should be awesome, is Ziggler and Miz, which is... Who would have thought this would be a great feud just a few months ago even? Our second takeaway concerns Bound for Glory this Sunday, which could well be TNA's last pay-per-view ever. Um, there have been various rumours going around the internet that TNA were cancelling flights for certain wrestlers. Then other stories came out and said, no, no, those, those stories aren't true, the flights are still on. And then <clears throat> the, the first stories responded saying like, no, no, those stories are false, they're just stories that have been spread by TNA management. It's all... If this rumour mill was a wrestling match, it would get five stars and this is awesome chance. There's just so many twists and turns, but look at the card of Bound for Glory. Do you think it'll be a good show? And do you think it'll even go ahead? And finally, if TNA does indeed go under, what will step up and become the second biggest promotion in North America? Will it be Lucha Underground or Ring of Honor? Will there be nothing? Will we enter a bit of a, a period of sort of wasteland? Uh, will it be a new promotion entirely? Will a new one spring up and start to dominate? Will it be Global Force Wrestling? That's definitely still a thing. So that's all for this week on The Fast Count. I've been Jack from WhatCulture.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore the jobber. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned to my Twitter feed for ongoing updates of the TNA situation if I'm awake when it happens. And I'll see you soon.